week 10 of the fantasy baseball season and here's a few pitchers i would look to drop this week the first guy ranger suarez of the philadelphia Phillies signed he's a playing good baseball over the last few weeks here nine out of ten they've won is this philly team but suarez he's been struggling mightily on the season four and four record 59 and a third 63 hits 29 earned runs 26 walks 49 strikeouts and four quality starts here for Suarez on the season with a 4.40 ERA and a 1.50 whip. So right here, he's not going deep into ball games. Last season, Suarez, he was pitching good baseball, but the last few outings and last few weeks to a month here, he really hasn't done much for fantasy owners. May 31st versus the Giants, four and a third, no decision. Five hits, two runs, three walks, five Ks in that one. June 7th at Milwaukee, seven innings in that game. No decision again, six hits, two runs, five Ks, and a quality start. And then his latest outing versus a weak Arizona Diamondback team on Sunday. Only four and a third got the loss in that one. Four hits, two runs, four walks, two Ks. So Suarez, last season he was great for this Philly team. But this year, he's been pretty much a fourth or fifth starter in this rotation. And a guy who's on the fringe of being a guy you hold on to a drop, but I'm going to say drop him in 10 and 12 team leagues. And he's been dropped in 5% of fantasy leagues in the last week here, Suarez, but still owned in 56% of leagues. So right here in a deeper league, I would hold on to him maybe for one more start where he'll have a decent matchup later in the week at the Washington Nationals. But after that, all bets are off here for Suarez. But right now, he's not a guy you can count on points league he's not really scoring points at all and he's hurting you in era and whip and he's not getting quality starts really under his belt so this week i would get away from suarez and drop him the second guy marcus stroman of the chicago cubs has stroman leaving the new york mets in the offseason and getting a nice contract with the cubs and obviously he was frustrated that the mets went for max scherzer instead of re-signing Stroman with his hometown team. But this season's been a train wreck for Stroman. 47 and a third, 2 and 5 record, 46 hits, 28 earned runs, 12 walks, 45 Ks, and 3 quality starts. I know last season the numbers were great for Stroman, but honestly, he was only a 5 or 6 inning pitcher, and obviously he was on a better team with the Mets than the Cubs. So right here, he had a couple decent outings before he went down with an injury. But now with the injury with Stroman and the struggles here, He's a guy I just couldn't count on and a guy would drop, especially with the right shoulder inflammation that could turn out to be even worse than what it is here with more testing on its way. May 24th at the Reds. Five innings in that one got the win. Four hits, two runs, two walks, AKs. May 29th at the White Sox. Seven innings, no decision, three hits, no runs, two walks, two Ks, a quality start. And then June 3rd in his last outing versus the St. Louis Cardinals, he got rocked four innings, got the loss. Ten hits, nine runs, a walk, seven K. So we know the Cubs aren't a good team. Stroman struggling mightily this season with a 5.32 ERA and a 1.23 whip. And right here, there's no need to hold on to him, especially with the shoulder inflammation. Well, I think at minimum, he'll probably be out a month as well. So with all those factors against him, I think it's an easy pitcher to drop this week. And next guy, Madison Bumgarner of the Arizona Diamondbacks and Bumgarner he got off to a hot start early in the season and overall his numbers are still pretty decent on the year 64 and a third I know the two and six record ain't the good part but 61 hits 25 earned runs 22 walks 45 k's two quality starts but only a three and a half ERA and a 1.29 whip so right here in terms of good I'm meaning those numbers but his win loss record obviously isn't good we know the diamondbacks one of the worst teams in the national league and bump gardner at this point is his career is a five or six inning pitcher at best especially in a tough division with the dodgers giants and the padres june 1st versus Atlanta, six innings got the loss seven hits two runs two walks six k's a quality start june 6 at cincinnati five innings Got the loss, eight hits, four runs, two walks, four Ks in that one. And June 11th at the Phillies, five innings, got the loss again, six hits, a run, two walks, four Ks. So right here, Bumgarner, he's only got two quality starts since May 10th. He's not going deep into games. His ERA's ballooned up over the last month of the season. And he's on a pretty bad team, so that's a lot of factors against him. And I think this week here, he's a pitcher. Fantasy only should drop. The next guy's Andrew Kidrick. Of the Tampa Bay Rays, a Kittrick here. He was uh, solid so far in the season, but now he's getting Tommy John surgery and he's out for the season, obviously. And I mentioned yesterday 
in my video to go out and get Jason Adam on the end list. And that's exactly what Ona should do now. A kid should out for the season and half of next season as well. On the season, 20 innings, he had three and one record, five saves, 15 hits, seven earned runs, two walks, 14 Ks. He did have three blown saves, 3.15 ERA and no 0.85 whip. So right here, obviously, he's not going to be pitching. Keeper leagues, dynasty leagues, whatever you want to call it, there's just no reason to hold on to him. And surprisingly, he's still owned in 30% of fantasy leagues. Hopefully he recovers and he gets back to form once he comes back from Tommy John surgery. But obviously, it's a no-brainer to drop him this week. And the fifth and final pitcher I look to drop this week is Jacob Junis of the San Francisco Giants. At Junis, he was big pickup over the last couple of weeks here. But now he's on the injured list with a hamstring injury. And obviously, that could be a long-term thing, especially for a pitcher that uses their legs, obviously, to push off the mound and get power behind their pitches. On the season for Junis, it was a nice comeback story for him. 48 innings, 4-1 record, 36 hits, 14 earned runs, 10 walks, 40 Ks, and two quality starts. So right here, he's only been dropped in 4% of fantasy leagues over the last few days. But like I mentioned, this injury could be a long-term thing here for Junis, especially a grade 2 hamstring strain and will be out resting for a while. So right now, the last few games before he went down, with the hammy. June 5th at Miami, six innings, got the win. Two hits, a run, two walks, AKs, a quality start. And June 10th versus the Dodgers, five innings, got the win, five hits, two runs, a walk, 5K. So right here, he was pitching pretty solid. Five, six inning pitcher, low ERA at a 2.63 and a 0.96 whip. But right here, he's not a top of the line guy where you're going to stash him on your injured list here. So right now, you would drop him and you hope by August. Well, mid-August, he comes back as Jacob Junis and can maybe give fantasy owners a punch in the middle of the season. But right here, he's definitely a pitcher I would drop. So that's a few pitches I would drop here for week 10 of the fantasy baseball season.